key number one, getting traffic with search engine optimization. So there's a lot that goes into optimizing a website for the search engines. Some of the things that uh, are involved is obviously getting ranked local and your GMB or Google My Business Profile, which is now called Google Business Profile, GBP. Uh, but you know, I'm still stuck on GMB. Uh, but that Google Business Profile of yours, getting into that is really going to help you uh, get your business more eyeballs. Uh, next, link building. We'll talk a little bit about how to build links from other websites back to yours. Something very popular now, obviously, is voice search and digital assistants, those home assistants and uh, people that just use their phone to search for things. Speaking of phones, we're going to talk about the mobile first index that rolled out about, uh, I'd say about a year and a half, two years ago now, uh, but still, still very, very important for a local business. And then visual search, something maybe you don't know about that we're going to talk about as well. So let's start with local rankings. Obviously, ranking local is what you're after, right? Trying to get those uh, those eyeballs. Here's an interesting statistic. 71% of all clicks go to either the three-pack or the, the map with the three pins, you might call it. Uh, we call it the three-pack or the snack pack. Uh, that or the first two uh, organic results in Google. If you're not listed there, you're going to miss 71% of the chance to get that customer. So it's blatantly obvious that you have to be in these two locations. Now, for the Google My Business profile, this may look familiar to you. You you set up a, uh, a profile at google.com slash business. You claim your listing. Uh, typically, they send you a postcard with a PIN number. You claim that listing. Make sure that everything on there is uh, correct and uh, you know has all your information as it should. If you don't, there's an info tab that you can click on to start going through and adding in your hours and your holidays and um, different attributes related to your company, such as is there parking? Uh, is there a handicap parking, handicap access? Uh, you are a um, work from home, then obviously you don't need to fill those kinds of things out, but you still want to fill out your hours, for instance, those types of things. Uh, but get all that filled out because it's really going to help you in the long run. In fact, uh, right now for our clients, somewhere between 60 and 70% of their leads come from this, from Google My Business, more than come from the websites for our clients. This is huge. This is the biggest piece of potential leads for your business. And we're going to talk a little bit more about how to start getting into that three pack, that list of uh, what we call conversations. When you first start out, this is uh, one of our tools that we use called Bright Local. And when you first start out, typically you're going to rank number one right where you're at, right in the middle, right? If somebody types in window treatments, Memphis, and you're in Memphis, and you're right down the road from where they are with their car, and they're on their phone, and they type that in, you're probably going to show up number one, right? Because that's where you are. Uh, this happens to be a client of ours I, on Maui. Uh, I believe this, no, this looks like it's, uh, oh, this is Manhattan. <laughs> okay. So this is a, a search for something, window treatments, New York, or something like that, right? Maybe even window treatments, uh, I don't know what this is, Manhattan, or Queens, or something, Bronx, maybe, uh, whatever it is, typically this is how it starts out. You want to start ranking further and further around if you're doing kind of a circle around here. And you can see this, you're green right there in the middle, then you're orange around there, and then red. You're not nowhere, you're nowhere to be found on those outskirts from your location. So there are ways to get uh, listed more often. And this is a client of ours on the island of Maui who is just killing it everywhere. Uh, you can't not search for window treatments and find him as one of the uh, options in typically the first option, which is just amazing. Another thing that's great about the, uh, the three pack is you can get listed in the three pack, but you can still rank in the top of the organic searches as well. And this is of course, SEO, this is search engine optimization. So one, you know, one search, you could show up two or three times. And then if you're running ads, you could show up four or five times on that first page of Google, which, you know, if there's three ads and 10 organic results 
and three three packs. So that's 16 potential businesses that are listed. If you are uh, one, two, three, four of those, right? We've got one in uh, the ads, one in Google My Business, and then two organic rankings. That's a pretty good odds that somebody's going to click on yours versus a competitor. So definitely worth uh, working on this kind of stuff and getting into these different things. All right, number two, SEO link building. So I mentioned this already, getting links from other websites pointing back to your site. Sounds easy, maybe not easy. It's uh, it's quite an, uh, what's a good word? Uh, arduous uh, and boring process to get links from other websites, but there are lots of ways to do it. And the the benefit is very, very good. So getting these links, you know, from uh, videos or maybe writing a blog, reading graphics, these kinds of things are going to uh, generate links back to your site. Uh, and the more of those links you have, the more votes you have for your business, the higher you're going to start ranking in the organic listings. One great way to do this is with guest blogging. Guest blogging is simply writing content and getting that content published on some other website. So in exchange for you giving another website a free piece of content, they put in a byline. And sometimes they'll even let you put a link in the actual article back to your business. So here's an example of one that that I did for my business top 10, 12, top 12 conversion rate optimization tips, right? So this is by me on a website called Business Advice Guide. And in the middle of this article, there's a link and that goes to my website. So Google's going to find this. They're going to see that this business related blog has linked back to us. That's going to be a vote for our business. And you can do the exact same thing. You know, there's plenty of interior designers, bloggers, all these people that are writing about re things related to our industry, where you could probably get some sort of a link similar to this back to your own business. Now, another thing you can do, obviously, everybody's using their phones to do, you know, hey, Siri, uh, find me uh, Taco Bell near me, right? Or find me window treatments near me. Those kinds of searches are being done very often. So it's very important that you start to create content that uh, people would be potentially searching for. This is where the near me phrase really comes in. A lot of people are using that, right? Window treatments near me, uh, awning services near me, or awning services nearby, those sorts of searches. And don't forget about the home assistance as well. Uh, I'm not going to mention mine because she'll start asking me what I want. Uh, but there are a couple big ones out there that most people have now. And very often they ask these, these devices for information related to local businesses. Here are the things that they typically ask about. Information about deals, sales, and promotions. Personalized tips to make my life easier. We all do that, right? Information about upcoming events. Just to find business information. So what is the phone number for Target? Those types of things, right, that people search for. Or what is the phone number for your business? And then access to customer support. So get me, you know, the phone number for their or something near me. Something like that would also be something that people use these devices for. So start thinking about how you can create content that people would use these devices to search for. So uh, lots of different things. Of course, the near me is the big one. And if you optimize your Google business profile, that will play into this in the near me uh, search, right? If somebody is saying something window treatments near me, part of the system will go back and look at your Google business profile, things like that, to find what is closest to this particular latitude and longitude that they're searching from. So pretty cool. Here's a couple different ideas that maybe you could uh, use for your business. Great way to start building content. Another really cool tool is called Answer the Public, and it's answerthepublic.com. So this tool is free, first of all, super cool, uh, but it lets you put in a topic. So in this case, let's put in awnings, right? And what this tool will do is it will give you all of the different uh, searches that people are using with the word awnings in it or related to awnings. So where can I find 
help re to get my awning repaired? Uh, how can I uh, cover my deck with an awning? All these different things, right? You just put in a topic and it gives you hundreds of different searches that people are searching for. And of course, you can use that to create content for your own uh, website as well. So answerthepublic.com, super cool. Definitely check that out. Here's an article I wrote for WF Vision Magazine called How Customers Are Trying to Find You in 2021. Another great example of link building and an authority play at the same time. This is an industry magazine and they're, you know, they're publishing my content, linking back to my business. This is a great example of uh, something that's relevant. And this is going to be a great uh, boost for, for company because of that link. All right, uh, next, mobile first index. So as I mentioned, um, probably about two years ago now, uh, Google came out and basically what they did is they cut their search index into two. Uh, and what that means is you can search for something on a desktop computer and get 10 results on a page. Uh, then you can do the exact same thing sitting in the exact same chair on your phone and you're likely to get 10 different results or the same results, but shuffled a little bit differently, possibly. So Google has, has spat apart. And the big reason is because for a long time, desktop kind of ruled the, the system and everybody used desktop. Nobody really used mobile, but that has drastically changed now where most people are using mobile devices for a very high majority of all of their searches. 56% in 2021, I would not be surprised if this number was 60, 70% now. But people are using their, their devices to find things. What Google did is they split the index because uh, there were some websites that were not mobile friendly. And that would be a bad experience to the searcher and then a bad experience that Google gave that person as a result. So they said, if your site's not mobile friendly, we're not even going to show it when somebody searches for it on a mobile device. So it's very important that no matter what, your website is what's called responsive. It, it res to the size of the screen. It shuffles things around as it needs to. Uh, all the information is still there, but it's uh, easy to deal with. Now, there is a tool called the mobile friendly test uh, that you can do for free. Uh, this is from Google. So you can use this link uh, or just go to Google and type in mobile friendly test. It'll come right up. Uh, but then you can plug in your website and see if it's 100% responsive and mobile friendly. And if it's not, or if there's any errors, it will tell you what those are. And it will even give you suggestions on how to fix that. Very important. Um, and then last part of SEO is visual search. So many people may not realize, but you can actually take a picture of something and do a search for that picture, that item. Uh, so here's an example on Pinterest of somebody doing a search for that lamp and then it looking at that picture and giving you uh, visually similar results where potentially you could buy. So if you had a certain design of cornice or you had a, a retractable awning that, that really cool, people could actually click on those things and search for those now. Also on Amazon, you can do this. You can take a picture of a product and do a search for it and it will actually show similar results, obviously that is on Amazon for sale, uh, but still really cool to know that, that these things are out there. Google also has a tool that's been around for a long time called Google Goggles. And uh, they've got some new updates to this and some, some newer products uh, out there. But the idea here is you can take a picture even of a landmark or a location, and it will try to figure out what that is and give you information about that thing that you just took a picture of. So pretty awesome. So when it comes to ways to apply this to your business, obviously having a photo gallery on your site is going to be huge. Uh, making sure that that is shared to your Google business profile, your Pinterest page, if you have a Pinterest page, Instagram would be another one. Uh, getting these uh, getting these photos onto those locations or those platforms would be great. Now, I will say this, um, you really want to use your own photos and not stock photos from Graeber and Hunter Douglas and Sunsetter and those kinds of things, uh, because those pictures are used all over the place. Uh, and you'll never show up for those because there's hundreds of other websites already using those. 
you want to use your own pictures that nobody's going to have a copy of, basically.